welcome back to my garden in York. It's National Insect Week, so I thought we'd celebrate with a poem about an insect. Now, I thought we'd go with a moth because we've been doing some moth trapping in our garden recently. You set a trap in the, uh, the previous night and then the next morning you open it up and it's very exciting to see what moths have been flying around in your garden that night. In fact, we set one last night and after I've recorded this video, I'm going to go and open it up and see what moths have been flying around in this garden. And don't worry, we let them go afterwards. No moths are harmed in this. There's just a light that attracts the moths. And the moths we've been having in our garden have got such beautiful names like Heart and Dart, Dusky Brocade, Buff Ermine. It's very exciting seeing what moths are flying around at night that we don't see. But if you haven't got a moth trap, fear not. There are loads and loads of day flying moths as well. If, for example, if you have mint or sage or marjoram, one of those aromatic herbs in your garden, you may well have this moth in your garden. We have this one most days, it's a mint moth. And I'll tell you one of my favorite day flying moths. It's called the hummingbird hawk moth. Can you see it here? The first time I saw it in my garden, I thought I was going bonkers. I thought I was seeing a hummingbird, which is highly unlikely here in Yorkshire, but it turned out it was a moth, the hummingbird hawk moth. So I hope you see some amazing day flying moths. But another way you might see night flying moths is during the daytime when they're resting, which is how I saw the moth that's in today's poem. That moth was by my window pane just over there. And it, it's a common wainscot moth. And this is what I imagined it thought about life, the universe, and everything. Dicky Wainscots, the name. How do you like my lion's mane? Don't be scared. I'm quite tame, don't you know? I don't prowl the savannah for quadruped animals. I just sit by your lounge window pane. I'm not head of a pride, don't have cubs by me side. Me horizons aren't wide, but hey ho, at night I'm abroad, completely ignored. But I take all that in my stride. Wainscot's the name, I'm just a moth, but all the same, I have my place in the game of life. I'm pleased with my lot, my lot's what I've got. Who needs king of the jungle fame? That poem is from my award-winning book, Buzzing, Discover the Poetry in Garden Mini Beasts. And here is the poem as it appears in that book, in case you'd like to perform it for yourself. And if you do, I'd love to see your video or hear your audio. And here from my buzzing book are the accompanying facts about the common wainscot moth. You'll see it says that this moth likes to eat nectar from flowers, which means that as it goes from flower to flower to flower, it will be doing pollinating. It will be pollinating the flowers. And in fact, moths as a whole are important pollinators as they go from flower to flower to flower. And with around 2,500 different moths in Britain, that's an awful lot of pollinating they get up to. So Dickie Wainscot is right in the poem when he says he has his place in the game of life. In fact, it's a very important place in the game of life as a pollinator, because pollination is absolutely key to the way the world works. So that's it from me for today, but for more of my learning through laughter, rhythm and rhyme nature videos about the mini beasts and the birds you might be seeing where you are, go to my website, thebigbuzz.biz, and click on Stuck at Home Resources. So I wish you happy moth hunting during this National Insect Week and beyond. I hope you find some amazing moths where you are, and I'll see you again soon for more learning through laughter, rhythm and rhyme nature videos. Bye!